An electric scooter is a motorized version of the traditional foot-powered kick scooter. While the kick scooter is designed primarily for children, the battery-powered electric scooter is decidedly an adult vehicle, popular with urban commuters looking for a simple and inexpensive set of wheels. This isn't your kid's scooter. Lightweight, battery-powered, and foldable, it reaches speeds of up to 32 kilometers per hour and can carry a passenger weighing up to a hefty 113 kilograms. Most of the components, like this sprocket which goes on the rear wheel, are made of aircraft-grade aluminum, a high-strength yet lightweight metal. After cutting the shape, the computer-guided milling machine cuts decorative holes which further lighten the weight. A punch press cuts the shape of the brake disc, made of aircraft-grade stainless steel, also a strong yet lightweight metal. The scooter chassis is made of high-strength steel. To one end, they weld on a bushing for the rear axle. To the other end, a large tube to house the scooter's electric motor. To that support tube, they weld the front part of the chassis, to which they'll later connect the handlebar. They also weld on a support for the rear wheel. They paint the chassis with a powder coat. Dry paint particles applied with an electrostatic charge, an application technique which ensures full, even coverage. The chassis goes through an oven for about 5 minutes at 206 degrees Celsius to bake on the finish. The brake disc, meanwhile, has gone through a heat treatment process for strengthening and has acquired aluminum spacers to properly position the first magnesium wheel rim, which goes on next, followed by the rubber tire, then the second wheel rim. To hold this front wheel assembly together, they thread a lug nut into the bolt protruding from each spacer. These lug nuts are self-locking, meaning their threads are shaped in such a way that they won't loosen during normal use. This is an important safety feature. Next, workers insert the battery-powered electric motor into the support tube on the chassis. After securing the motor in place with screws, they install the drive chain adjuster. The drive chain links the motor to the rear wheel. This adjuster maintains the appropriate chain tension under all conditions. They mount the rear axle and rear wheel with its large sprocket. They install a small sprocket on the drive shaft, which protrudes from the motor. Then they take the drive chain, made of high strength steel, and hook it around the two sprockets. They mount the rear fender and chain guard, both made of high strength plastic then tighten the axle to hold everything together securely. Now for the scooter's handlebar. An automated welding machine fuses two aluminum tubes into a T. After chemically treating the handlebar to prevent corrosion and wear, they install a catch that holds the handle to the base when the scooter's folded. Next, the lever for the disc brake on the front wheel and the control for the motor. Last but not least, rubber handlebar grips embossed with a snazzy design. The motor control has a push-button ignition, a thumb throttle for regulating speed, and a battery life indicator. With the motor control and brake lines taped in their proper position, workers mount the handlebar on the chassis with a hinge pin, enabling it to fold down onto the base. They mount the front wheel with its disc brake. When you activate the handlebar brake lever, this caliper and pad grab the disc, which stops the rotating wheel. An aluminum pan in the base holds the battery, battery charger, and all the electronics. They cover it with a birchwood platform on which the rider stands. The wood has a weatherproof coating and features the company logo in non-skid material to prevent the rider's feet from slipping. The mechanics are simple. The motor turns the drive shaft, which turns the small sprocket, which turns the chain, which turns the large sprocket mounted on the rear wheel, propelling the scooter.